see. This is going to be Lionhearted. So Lionhearted is going to be the uber governor. And then the anomaly hunter is going to be Arakor. And that's all the patrons done. I know there are a couple which will be done next month. Looking at it now, it's like 1st of December, but it's 2 o'clock in the morning on the 1st of December. So we'll just need to wait your turn, don't worry, we'll get one. Everything is delayed by a month when it comes to Patreon. And then I'm going to go with this page. This is going to be slot number 7. Crikey, I'm going through a lot of names this month. Which is good. It's very good. And this was... Mr. MC. And this is going to be... Random number person. There's Albera. There's Al. There's her. The Sorcerer. This is going to be... Fanro. And... Isdar. Isdar the Genius. There you go. How's that? Alright, then we need to recruit a Admiral. Well, we don't necessarily need to do that now. So we'll hold off on the Admiral. We will need to recruit another scientist when we get the second science ship, but again, doesn't need to be now. The fleet itself needs to be named, though. This is going to be the first Bacon Killer fleet. Or just the Bacon Killer fleet. Because it amuses me. Life Seeded gets rare resources on the planet. Oh, wow, I am paused. I did not mean to do that. I did mean to take a look at what kind of districts we have. So, again, terrible generation. So, all of our energy production is going to come through trade, which is fine. I mean, that's kind of intended. We are a size 19 planet, so we're actually slightly smaller than last time. We do have one less city district. Uh, we have eight mining districts and nine agriculture. So we're going to be very agricultural and very mining. Um, okay. And we're the Empire Capital, which means we get stability, amenities, and governing ethics attraction increased. And we're building cost, district cost, and planet build speed. All modified positively as well. But we can't build any actual buildings just yet. What we can do is get the construction ship to start working on the mineral production sites. Which are in our home sector. And that's literally all I can afford. Let's do this. Let's go up to Upscale straight up to complete. fastest. Starbase has done its job, so we've got the other science ship. So we'll assign another leader, which we, will shall, which we shall have to recruit. Anoma, another anomaly speed. Oh, we're going to need to wait a month and then we can recruit you. So, we'll do that. There we go. Science ship. Recruit. Anomaly person, which was you. You need a name. That's going to be... GN Fighter. We're going to go aboard the ship. What are my rulers' perks? That is an excellent question. Uh, Stutthalder Mordred is a champion of the people, providing extra happiness, and also a space miner. These are really good. Not as good as the cheaper star bases and outposts, but I'll take this. Mining station output plus 10%, mining station build cost minus 25%, so getting our economy up and running. This is actually a very nice combination. I like it. Glorious. Uh, we could... We could spend some influence. Question is, do we want to? Uh, yes, actually we do, desperately. So the influence that I'm kind of humming and hurrying about here is because I would like to get a policy up and running. Not a policy, a edict, which is going to be Map the Stars. Map the Stars early on is super important because of that plus 10% anomaly discovery chance, which means when you do get anomalies, they're going to be close to home, which means they usually buff up the 
uh, star systems near to where you are actually based. And that works out really quite nicely, especially as we're starting to scan this stuff. And hello, planet. Ocean, another ocean world. Jackpot! Strategic resource discovered during the survey of Udar 3, the HNMS Diffrex. Ah, I wasn't paused. Discovered several exotic gases previously unknown to us. These gases have a variety of different uses, particularly in the operation of advanced energy-based weaponry and force fields. Some of the gases can also be used as starship fuel or even as recreational drugs. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. Exotic gases. I have seen those appear in quite a few build requirements. So we can get them in Udar already. Nice. And the other thing I was going to do was rename the science ships. And also, you don't have a job, so um, you're going to go survey that, and you're going to head north. Because I really want to know what's around us, and whether there are any other choke points I should be rushing for. Right, construction ship, you are going to go and build me the energy. Yeah. And I'm going to name the science ships, because their name seems to come up quite a lot. So this is going to be the Johnny Five. Damn it, how do you spell that? No H. And this one, which is the Widow Taxes. Hopefully we run into space pigs. Yeah, that would work quite well, wouldn't it? So yes, for those of you who didn't realise, I'm using subscriber names and Twitch names. Um, which is why the names are a little bit weird, but it's all the people who have paid for the privilege. And if you yourself would like to be added to those lists, then you can always subscribe here on the channel. Or you can check out the Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash Viking. Any support, obviously, lets me continue doing this for a living. Which is amazing, because I play games for a living. Like, how cool is that? Anomaly! Vaguely to find shapes swirl with the currents in Udor 1's vast oceans. Routine difficulty. Leave it for now. I want to just explore stuff. Discovery of alien life. The Johnny 5 has made a startling find on Udor 1. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Keldalunt. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Uldor are sapient, it's likely only a matter of time before we come to beings that are. Maybe. Probably. Possibly. Simple forms of life. The Morticorp is abuzz with the news of alien organisms discovered by Johnny Five some time ago. These little evolutionary marvels kindle the Morchchent people to renewed hope of her contact with intelligent beings with a wallet. Intelligent consumerist beings System with money. Alright, so Uldor is now completely surveyed. It comes with trade value, which is amazing. The planet itself is titchy. It's a 14, um, but I'll take it. Sorry, I'm just working something out here. Does not equal that size. I don't get how these are related. I really don't. Because I thought for a minute, oh, these are actually the same. So the number of districts here did actually equate the size. If you ignore the cities. <laughs> I don't get it. I really don't get it. But what we are going to do is we're going to get the constructor ship and we are going to try and get an outpost here at some point in the future because we can't afford it for quite a long time. Trade value does indeed convert into credits. Uh, just leave it be for now. Uh, so we could get some more engineering tech. Do I want to keep on spending the minerals? Oh, yes. At this point, there is not a lot you can do with them. Although they are like the basic building 
block. But what we really need is uh, alloys. We need our alloys. So we <laughs> we should be saving the minerals so that I can build another alloy factory. That's really what we should have done. We need 360. Okay, it's fine. We're going to get more technology and technology adds up, so it's fine. This works. Market outlier identified. Leave for now. Just keep on doing your discovery stuff. Evading competitive threat. Oh. Oh. Wait. Construction ship did. The Temple of Unity. Centuries ago, a group of radical priests and their devoted... Uh, followers on the Keldalund broke away in the established religions to form their own church. These extremists called themselves the Temple of Unity and have been responsible for many atrocities and acts of terror over the years. Um, well, you're about to run into my fleet and warship. Warp base thing. Cultist ship disabled! Our valiant space forces have skillfully disabled the ship in the cultist armada. It's mostly intact and we are picking up faint life signs from inside its hull. Once we have eliminated all threats in the immediate vicinity, we should conduct a boarding operation to secure any survivors. They may be able to tell us what's up with the ultimate motives of the Temple of Unity. Prepare the, the breaching charges. Puritans. Belgians. Uh, need one military ship in orbit. That can be arranged. Go forth and research project. The Yucht Empire. The Yucht Empire. We have discovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Dajak II. Our scientists think they are inhabited this region of stars roughly six million years ago. Based on the age of the artifacts, the aliens called themselves the Yucht and appear to have been very large in flat anthropod analogues. It seems a single individual could reach a length of nearly a hundred meters as an adult and was apparently exceedingly rare for more than two or three Yucht to travel the aboard the same starship. Raised. We now know, without a doubt, that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Keldalunt, but the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn about the various forms of alien life throughout the galaxy. That's a very commendable initiative to carry on. Revised. And battle. Battle victory. Victory day. Outlier identified. The remnants. Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence, reads a popular newsletter post on Keldalunt. The people of the Mordcorp are apparently finding some humour in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from other stars continue to elude us. Science officer Arko Varich's report on the traces found on Dajak 2 seemingly only add to the ironic twist of the situation. Too bad it's not the first league, they give a city world now. Special project actualized. Boarding action. Though the survivors offered stiff resistance, our boarding party was able to secure the several prisoners from the disabled cultist starship. From what we have learned, this current conspiracy goes far deeper than we initially suspected. The agents of the Temple of Unity secure. They include several flag officers and high-ranking officials from within our government. Mass arrests are being made on Helderlunt and all assets belonging to the cult have been seized. However, several of the starships they have built in secret remain unaccounted for, and the upper echelons of the cult's leadership have vanished. We have picked up faint ion trails leading to several outlying systems. Right, so the construction ship is once again without work. We are waiting for just a little bit more influence, so we're going to move you over here ready to do that, although we are going to need to save up minerals, food, and consumer goods, all of which we actually have for a colony ship. So once Uldor is taken, we can get a colony ship out pretty quickly, colonize that, and then we'll have the two colonies going. And Uldor being established this much sooner, like 30 years sooner than the previous game, will mean that we have a pretty good uh, step up in terms of building up a population, getting trade flowing. How's the new game going? It is going a heck of a lot better already. And a heck of a lot better. Although I've still not found any new trading partners. Beck and Flilith... Bacon Killer Fleet has been repaired. I never got an Admiral. We could have got some experience with the Admiral. Oh well. Poison Salami, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. And yeah, I can now build a building, which is going to be the Alloy Foundry. Should have done that. Potential market survey completed. Uh, 
free influence next month. You're still scanning, you're still scanning. Oh, I see, you just finished Nostria, which comes with even more trade value. Oh, yes. Wasn't expecting your name to pop up. Yeah, I make a point of uh, welcoming everyone that I can. I may miss the odd person, and I always feel terrible when that happens. Alright, so, traditions. Uh, diplomacy. So is diplomacy actually different for us? Yes, we can now actually get federations. So, the diplomacy tree... Diplo influence cost reduced by 50% and pop growth from immigration increased by 10%. So, immigration's stronger. Adopting diplomacy traditions will increase trust cap by plus 50 and our trust growth by 33%. So, we're going to be able to get beneficial trade agreements quicker with diplomacy, which makes sense. Form federation... Amount con we contribute towards the Federation Naval Capacity Council for twice. Uh, Empire trade value increased by 10%. Market fee reduced by 10%. And base trade protection for trade routes increased by 5%. See, I'm not that interested in getting federations. I hate the federation system in this game. Though I must admit I haven't had one for a while. But these three are so strong. Now, expansion would also be a good choice. Colony development plus 25%. And finishing it would mean all of my planets, non-habitat planets, have one additional district. Starbase influence cost is reduced by 10%. Admin cap increased by 20. Starbase upkeep reduced by 20. New colonies start with an additional population and population speed is also increased, or growth speed is increased by 10%. So we could probably do with blitzing through expansion to get these two. Uh, the other one, which is also really strong, Prosperity mining station output increased by 10%. That's less useful right now because of the trait of our ruler. However, adopting all prosperity traditions gives our planet one merchant job per 50 population. I really don't know if that's global or if it's per planet. Because if it's global, that's incredible. If it's per planet, then it's quite a lot less good. Building upkeep and district upkeep reduced by 10%. Good, but I have a feeling we're going to be fairly wealthy. Specialist output increased by 5%. That is strong. City districts provide one additional clerk job. Also strong, because remember we're thrifty, which means the clerks generate more cash for us. Which is then multiplied even further by the specialist output, because clerks are specialists. Or are they? Are they workers? I might need to double check that one. Buildings and districts have their build costs reduced by 10%. Build speed is increased by 25%. That's really strong, but we have, in the previous game, uh, several times reached... Um, where we just kind of got blocked by population limits. And city districts provide additional housing. That's more useful later on. I think we're going to go early expansion. Especially to get these two. If I can get this before we finish the first colony, that would be extremely strong start. So we'll go ahead and grab you. Expansion finisher is why the district count was off last game. I don't think so, because we did the district count here and it was off already. Getting diplomacy can now allow you to get deals with no influence cost. I generally play very diplo light games, so I'm kind of curious to see exactly how this changes things for me. We'll see. Because I still maintain diplomacy as the weakest aspect of Stellaris. When did the stream start? Like, five hours ago, Adam. <laughs> Although we did start a new game, because the previous one kind of hit a stone wall. Stellaris is always entertaining to play, so this expansion is looking good too. I can't say whether I agree or not. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Make your own decision. See what you think. A leader has gained a level, so Arakor Vorich is already upgraded. That's great. Systems are being fully surveyed, and the constructor is here. Build me that starbase. Get me that Uldor. And then Heldelund, I would like to see your shipyard. Colony ship, what am I lacking? Food we have. Alloys. It's always the sodding. Alloys. One thing with federalizing is the strongest member is now the leader, which is way better. 
Uh, yeah, if you are the really another ocean plant. Oh, it's continental. I'll take that. That's how it works. Okay, I knew there was a difference between different planets. So if they're in the same category, then it's a 70%. If it's the same type as you, then it's 90%. Yeah. No, sorry, it's 80% if it's the same type. If it's the same category, then 60. Remember, we are um, adaptable, so we have plus 10. And then if they're not in the same category, i.e. warm or cold, then it will be 30, maybe 40%. But regardless, that's two planets there. A 20 size, which is very nice. 14's okay, but a 20 continental? Yes, please. Upscaling complete. And we have built the Starbase in Uldor. Excellent. So we need to wait, I think, two months. Then we can build the next thing. We have unemployment. Oh, that's going to go away as soon as the alloy foundries are done. So that's fine. And also we can start shifting population from Keldalon to see Uldar grow quicker. And I think I'm going to reduce this too fast because this is going pretty quickly. Alright, Keldalon, I would like for you to build me colony ship. Boom! And I think that that is a great place to end this. Um, because my throat is killing me and I really do need to go to bed at some point today. And also I have a bunch of rendering to do for tomorrow. So I'm going to take a very quick look to see who else is online. See if there's anyone else doing Stellaris. Whom I can guide you guys to. Uh, Stellaris. Try out the Cool Eagle. Give you a bit of a boost. Let me just double check. I like to listen in on people before I actually host them. So bear with me a moment here. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to say thank you very much to all of you for watching. I do hope you're enjoying this. If you are, make sure you hit that follow button so that you get notifications when I am live again in the future. If you have really enjoyed this, then you can also consider subscribing. Uh, any support you can provide is seriously greatly appreciated, like what Asiac just did. Thank you so much for those bits. That makes this evening worth it. <laughs> Plus, of course, having so many viewers. That honestly is what made it worth it. Having so many viewers is just amazing. Um, I do also have a... YouTube channel, which you can find at youtube.com slash MordredViking. That is where I'm probably going to upload to the beginning of the previous series because I do a very in-depth like look into all the new stuff and then I'll probably just cut it and then switch to this. So it's not going to be the whole series. But if you missed out on that and like all of the really new stuff, then I would heartily recommend you go and check that out. I also have a bunch of other things up there. Uh, I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel in that way. You can find that at patreon.com slash Viking. Cool Eagle seems pretty cool, so we're going to start raiding you. Uh, we'll let that tick up while we're waiting. Um, then finally, I have a Discord. So if you wish to come and hang out with me and the rest of the community, you are absolutely welcome to do so. You can find that at the link I have just posted. Vela Dacha, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Uh, it's always lovely to see some new faces there on the Discord, so please do come along. Uh, we talk a lot about games, so if you want to hear more about Megacorp, if you want the latest information on what I'm streaming and when and that type of thing, that is also my main mouthpiece to the community. Right, I'm going to go and uh, do this follow, uh, this raid. Head on over there. Hit up the uh, horns if you have access to them. If not, just yell a couple of times like, Viking Raid! That's usually how I like to get this going. Thank you everyone for watching. Seriously and earnestly, you guys have been amazing. And I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye.